In this video, we can discuss about anti-Parkinsonian drugs. So let's start with the definition. These are the drugs that have therapeutic effect in Parkinsonism. Now what is Parkinsonism? What is the reason for Parkinsonism? Parkinsonism will occur if there is a decrease in dopamine which is a neurotransmitter in brain. So if there are any decreasing dopamine in brain, it will lead to Parkinsonism. Now how can we treat Parkinsonism? We can treat Parkinsonism by either increasing the release of dopamine or by decreasing the degradation of dopamine. So what is Parkinsonism? In the case of Parkinsonism, there are symptoms. It is an extra pyramidal motor disorder which is characterized by rigidity, tremor and hypokinesia with a secondary manifestation like defective posture and jet and mask like face and siluria, dementia may accompany along with these side effects. So what will happen if it is left untreated? If untreated the symptom, Symptoms will progress over the several years to end stage disease in which patient is rigid, unable to move, unable to breathe properly and uh, there will be a chest infections and embolism. And this is, the, uh, this is due to the deficiency of dopamine in stratum which control usually this dopamine is the main neurotransmitter which will control the muscle tone and coordinate the movement in the body, coordinate the movements of the body. So, this is the main stage in the initial stage of hypokinesia tremor. If we don't treat it, we will get the final stage of rigidity and unable to move in the middle of breathlessness. It will be difficult to move in the middle of it. Now coming to the classification of anti-Parkinsonian drugs, it is mainly classified into drug acting in brain dopaminergic system and drug affecting in brain cholinergic system. And the uh, drug affecting in the brain dopaminergic system is again classified into dopamine precursors like levodopa. Peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors that is carbidopa and benzeracyte. Dopaminergic agonists like bromocryptin, ropinirol and premipexol. Monoamino oxygenase B inhibitors like selagilinin and rasagilinin. Catecholamine orthomethyl transferase inhibitors like endacarpone and tolcapone. Glutamate or N-methyl D-aspartate receptor agonist like amandadine. So these are the drugs which will affect on the dopaminergic system. And the drugs which will affect on brain cholinergic systems are central anticholinergic drug trihexylphenidine and procyclidin and piperidine. And antihistamines which are the drugs which will inhibit the histamine receptors like orphanadrine and promethacine. So this is the classification of anti-Parkinsonian drugs. So this is the classification. Now coming to the first drug that is levodopa. So as we all know, uh, the Parkinsonism is mainly due to the decreasing dopamine in the brain. So it is the, a, a deficiency of dopamine in uh, brain. So we can treat by giving the dopamine assets but the problem is the dopamine assets will not crosses the blood brain barrier. So in order to cross the blood brain barrier we have to formulate the dopamine as a prodrug that is levodopa. That is why we are using levodopa as a precursor for treating uh, Parkinsonism disease. So, dopamine is a neurotransmitter, that is the deficiency in the same time that Parkinson is found out. So, dopamine as such could be a reason for the dopamine to cross the dopamine blood brain barrier. So, if you want to cross the blood brain barrier, that is the product of the pro-drug from the liver dopa and the drug that we use here. So, that is the first drug, liver dopa. 
Now, what are the actions of levodopa in CNS? Hypokinesia and rigidity will resolve first, later tremor as well uh, uh, will resolve. Secondary symptoms of posture, giant handwriting, speech, facial expression, mood, self-care and interesting life are gradually normalized due, due to the administration of levodopa for a uh, period. Now coming to the action in cardiovascular system. Peripherally uh, formed dopamine will lead to tachycardia due to its beta adrenergic receptor action, but usually there will not be any rise in BP. Now, in chemo trigger zone, dopamine will act as an excitatory transmitter, and dopamine formed peripherally gain access to the chemo trigger zone without hindrance and it may elicit the nausea and vomiting. Now, in case of endocrine clan, Dopamine act as an pituitary mammotropes to inhibit the prolactin release as well as on somatotropes to increase the growth hormone release. So these are the actions of levodopa. Now coming to the adverse drug reactions of levodopa. At the initiation of therapy, the side effect can be minimized by starting with low dose and the usual adverse drug reaction at the initiation of therapy are nausea and vomiting postural hypertension, cardiac arrhythmia, exacerbation of angia, angina, alteration in the thirst and sensation. And after prolongation of, after prolonged therapy, there are some adverse drug reaction like, like abnormal movement or dyskinesia, then behavioral effects, fluctuation in motor performances. So these are the adverse drug reactions of levodopa. Now coming to drug interaction, pyridoxin will increase the peripheral decarboxylation of levodopa and it will uh, leads to decreasing dopamine uh, levodopa action. Phenothiazin buterophenone reverse the therapeutic effect of levodopa by blocking dopaminergic receptor. So all these are antipsychotic drugs which will block on D2 receptor. So effect of levodopa will be blocked. Then postural hypertension may be caused by acute accumulated by high the hypertensive. So these are the some important uh, drug interactions of lipotop. So main uses to for the treatment of uh, anti-Parkinsonism or uh, used as an anti-Parkinsonism drug. Now coming to next drug that is the peripheral decarboxylase enzyme or enzyme inhibitor like carbidopa and benzeracin. So as we mentioned before, uh, we are using Levodopa as a prodrug of dopamine in order to cross the blood brain barrier. But the problem while using levodopa is dop levodopa may be decarboxylized by this uh, decarboxylase enzyme, peripheral decarboxylase enzyme before it penetrating into the blood brain barrier. So, in order to prevent this decarboxylation, we have to use carbidopa or benzorazep which is peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors along with the dopamine in order to prevent the decarboxylation, peripheral decarboxylation and thereby uh, it will uh, penetrate the blood brain barrier and this carbidopa and benzorazep will not penetrate into the blood brain barrier and do not inhibit the conversion of levodopa to dopamine in brain. So, uh, dopamine levodopa IT use in the Samet and down there problem the uh, peripherally other blood load at the other in a munne other decarboxylase enzyme dopamine a dopamine IT con levodopa and dopamine IT convert him up other in a blood brain barrier crucia but other of us to you up in the genome number e levodopa a coda carbidopa benzorazide macoparna decarboxylase inhibitors I love peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors I love drug use in the Samet. That is the decarboxylase action and we prevent the amitum. That is the decarboxylation and prevent the amitum. The liver open a blood brain barrier cross the amitum. Blood brain barrier and agathote dopa decarboxylase enzyme penetration in lathodana. So that is the agathe liver open dopamine it split out in gym, dopamine reaction produce AMG. Okay. So what is the advantages of these peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors? So, it is uh, usually administered along with the levodopa, thereby we can increase its half-life, uh, we can increase the 
half life of levodopa in the periphery and also uh, it can make more available to cross the blood brain barrier and it will reach us its site of action and thereby it can uh, we can reduce the dose of levodopa up to one fourth if we are using levodopa alone appo uh, levodopa mathramayittu use eina samayathu adinte kooda namukku peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors aayittulla carbidopa benzazide use cheythu kanyal levodopa da dose namukku adinte one fourth aayittu korakkan pattum ennalla thaniyan advantage ennu parayum okay now coming to next drug that is dopaminergic agonist like bromocriptin so uh, this dopamine agonist can act on striatal dopamine receptor even in advanced patient who have largely lost the capacity to synthesize store and release dopamine from the levodopa so that is the dopaminergic agonist now coming to next class of drug that is mao b inhibitor like selegilin mono amino oxygenase inhibitor this is an selective and irreversible mono amino oxygenase b inhibitors so uh, the degradation of levodopa can or dopamine can be prevented thereby it can increases the uh, amount of neurotransmitter like dopamine now what are the adverse drug reactions of mao b inhibitors postural hypotension nausea confusion and acutation of levodopa induced involuntary movement and psychosis partly metabolized by liver into amphetamine which sometimes cause insomnia and agitation and selegilin is contraindicated in patient with convulsive disorder so this is the mao p inhibitor now coming to next class of drug that is glutamate or nmda receptor antagonist uh, or dopaminic facilitator like amandadi so these amandadin are uh, developed as an antiviral drug which is used for the prophylaxis of influenza a2 but uh, it was found serendipitously to benefit the parkinsonism it will act rapidly but lower efficacy than levodopa which is equivalent to or higher than the anticholinergic drugs now what are the adverse drug reactions of amandadin insomnia restlessness confusion nightmare anticholinergic effects and rarely hallucination a characteristic side effect due to the local release of cat catecholamines is resulting in post capillary vasoconstriction in lib libido reticularis and edema of angus these are the important adverse drug reactions of amandadin now coming to uh, centrally acting drugs these are the drugs which will act on cholinergic drugs like uh, trihexylphenidine or benzexol it is usually used uh, it is used only effective in uh, drug induced parkinsonism uh, usually this drug induced parkinsonism are caused by the prolonged use of antipsychotic drugs which will block the dopamine receptor d2 receptor blocking so a uh, chlorpromazine uh, like drugs typical uh, conventional antipsychotic drugs will cause uh, drug induced parkinsonism if it is treated for a long period of time so it will not alter the basic pathology of parkinsonism a disease progression will be continued it will only provide systematic uh, symptomatic relief and give more, most of the patient an additional 3 to 6 year of happier and productive life life so that is the uh, centrally acting drug or drug acting on cholinergic receptor like benzexol so that is all about anti parkinsonism drugs this is caused by deficiency of dopamine so we can treat by either giving dopamine as a precursor or by decreasing the degradation of dopamine and uh, that is all about parkinsonism drug hope it is clear thank you for watching this video